And Frank is going to introduce our uh, next speaker giving testimony as we continue to put the U.S. Cold War on trial. Frank? All right. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Alice. It's my privilege to uh, introduce Norman Solomon. Uh, Norman is the National Director of Roots Action and the author of many books, including War Made Easy, uh, How the Presidents and Pundits Keep Spinning Us to Death. And it was made into a really important anti-war film narrated by Sean Penn and also Norman uh, narrates it too. One of my favorite anti-war films. Norman was a Bernie Sanders delegate from California uh, uh, to the 2016 and 2020 Democratic National Conventions. And Norman is the founder and executive director of the Institute for Public Accuracy. And uh, here's Norman Solomon. Hey, thanks to everybody who's been making this wonderful commission event possible. Um, I'm speaking on this topic, why so many progressives joined in with the Russiagate frenzy, which I would date to uh, the last five years, basically, and it ain't over as we've seen in the last several days. I just saw in the chat a few minutes ago, somebody wrote, Putin is no hero, but Biden has no standing to call him a killer. Um, I also don't know that Biden has a theological background to uh, pronounce whether uh, Putin has a soul, but that's sort of a side note. If you think about the last five years, just guesstimate how many airtime minutes on MSNBC Rachel Maddow devoted to Russiagate and talking about the evils of Russia compared to the number of airtime minutes talking about the dangers of nuclear weapons and nuclear war. Uh, the study has been done, but I would be sure that the ratio is thousands to one. And that tells us a lot about the US mass media coverage of issues between the United States and Russia, and really how badly, extremely out of whack and dangerous the coverage is. Uh, the reality is, I mean, if we, if we look at uh, from 2016 to this moment, there is a vast number of people who call themselves progressives, including many who have described themselves as anti-war peace-oriented people who were to a very large extent on the Russiagate train, villainizing the Russian government, villainizing Putin, blaming Russia for fundamental flaws in the 2016 election and in the lack of democracy in the United States. And this has had profound and huge impacts that carry forward to this day and are very ominous and frankly could contribute to um, an eventual uh, nuclear holocaust. So I think it's very important to ask ourselves, how could so many progressives be on board with a line of propaganda that increases the chances of nuclear war? Uh, there's certainly a lot of factors. There's not in my 10 minutes really uh, enough time to really go, go into them, but. Certainly, yes, uh, there was sort of an enemy of my enemy is my friend counterpart where if Trump was doing X and uh, war hawks like Adam Schiff were saying why, then because Trump was so awful, then people would start to identify with a war hawk like Adam Schiff and not see the implication. And what are the implications? I think that's a question yeah. that the admirers of Rachel Maddow and countless other uh, Russiagate enthusiasts and media. Uh, these are implications that just are never or have rarely been explored to the end point. The end point is that what is the final foreseeable result of continuing to bang on the anti-Russia drum? And as the uh, person who wrote in the chat said, and I certainly agree, uh, you know, Putin's no hero. I'm not holding him up as some great peace advocate. I think uh, an examination of the record shows the United States, as Alice has pointed out in the last couple of decades, the United States has been much more at fault in escalating the nuclear arms race. But uh, you know, Putin's no saint, but that's not the point. The point is that Russia and the United States have more than 90% of the nuclear weapons on this planet. The point is that the end point, the foreseeable end point of the Russiagate frenzy and all this anti-Russia stuff that is over the top in the news media, often at least through silence, aided and abetted by groups that say they're for peace and disarmament. The end point is that we 
move closer and closer to diplomatic, rhetorical, geopolitical, and yes, military conflict between the United States and Russia. So it's like the equivalent of the CEO uh, of a huge corporation that doesn't want to think past the next quarter or two. It's people who think, well, you know, we didn't like Trump, so we'll use this against Trump. And now it's, well, we've got to support Biden on all of this uh, denunciation of Russia because, well, we support Biden. It makes no friggin' sense at all. It's just buying into a mass media and political establishment gravy train that helps the military industrial complex to make the sale for more and more weapons, keep the Pentagon military budget higher and higher. Uh, this is the agenda. And we've got to make sure that not only do we not buy into it, but that in the days, weeks, and months ahead, uh, peace and disarmament and generally progressive groups stop being part of that problem either by somehow echoing the mass media now Biden administration line or by silence. And let's talk about silence. I mean, you can make a list of dozens and dozens into the hundreds of groups, uh, national, regional, local, that are peace oriented uh, and sincerely we want to assume are trying to bring about disarmament and peace. And you can down that list and then assess how many of them challenge the Russiagate narrative that the Kremlin has been and continues to be this mortal threat to democracy, implicitly more than the Koch brothers, more than Wall Street, more than the military contractors. I mean, it's, it's preposterous and yet it's been ratified uh, in effect, if not actively, at least in silence by the vast majority of that list you would have made of groups. So, you know, I, I'm very glad that uh, me and my colleagues at rootsaction.org, we've been challenging that uh, narrative from the beginning actively, uh, as well as my colleagues at the Institute for Public Accuracy. I know there are other groups that have been doing that actively uh, in the last five years, uh, but we have a tremendous amount of work to do uh, to, in solidarity, challenge many activists and groups that even today are either agreeing with uh, implicitly or being silent about uh, what the Biden administration is doing, uh, the pronouncements, the saber rattling towards Russia and China. And so we've got not only Biden who is uh, saying, reaffirming his assessment, his theological assessment that Putin has no soul, but also that he's a, a killer uh, as though somebody who supported uh, the Iraq war can go around preaching about being a killer. Uh, but we also have Antony Blinken, who by the way, was supported by some peace and disarmament groups quite avidly to be secretary of state when he was nominated. He's going off and threatening China, going to Alaska and beyond to say that uh, China is a huge threat. So as the saying goes, we, we've seen this movie before, we know where it is headed and where it is headed uh, unless we can avert it, is further war, further catastrophe, and unfortunately, a great possibility of thermonuclear war. And so I just want to close by saying that we have an opportunity uh, to, as the saying goes, do a reset. That maybe the last few days can be a useful shock uh, to those who didn't want to talk about what was wrong with the Russiagate narrative. Didn't want to talk about uh, the anti-Russia frenzy, but we have to talk about it. We have to challenge it because that's what peacemaking is all about. Thank you so much, uh, Norman. S such important testimony and, you know, uh, leading to an action that tomorrow's Monday again, and if you weren't here earlier, let's contact Congress. I mean, you know, this, this, Truth Commission is happening just at a time when heightened tensions, awareness, fear. And so maybe, you know, it's time that we can say that we were at this webinar. We can send the links to our representatives, let them know that this isn't just now, this is a pattern. And we're now putting the Cold War on trial and showing the pattern of U.S. aggression around the world. And if um, anyone is truly sincere about January 6th and, and fear as they are, you know, in Congress, the true, you know, 
fear, um, then let's let them know that this is no accident. It's a pattern.